Uh, okay, hi everyone. I'm Tim Ofchenko, and this is my project on mental well-being interventions in New Zealand forestry. So I'll begin by defining what a mental well-being intervention is. Um, an intervention is any action taken to improve a health disorder, and for the case of this project, it's mental health uh, well-being, mental well-being. So we know that New Zealand forestry is a hazardous work environment. Uh, workers are exposed to physical hazards, falling hazards, and uh, working around large machinery, um, but also a large number of psychosocial hazards, being uh, you could have isolated work environments or um, repetitive work and uh, long long periods of sitting and um, for machine operators. So the aim of this project was to figure out how we can, um, what we can do about, um, sorry, the what we can do to, improve mental well-being um, for forest workers because there is a lack of knowledge about what can be done to alleviate these um, mental well-being issues which are usually work-related stress and then uh, determine oh so um yeah so the objective of the project is to explore what's been done globally in different blue-collar work environments and then to see how um these interventions can be transferred into New Zealand forestry because there's not much information exclusively in forestry globally. So the project started with a literature search and um, I used generic uh, academic online databases such as Google Scholar and Scopus along with a set of keywords where um, in the middle table we can see these are the keywords which yielded the highest rates of success um, for working interventions studies. And in my literature search, I was trying to address five categories, being uh, skills training, improvement of work conditions, improvement of occupational qualifications, um, interventions targeting relaxation, and also interventions targeting physical exercise. So for my literature analysis, um, so following my search, I yielded around 80 studies using the, the keywords in the search function. And um, after some iterative screening, I narrowed that down to 31 studies and eight systematic reviews um, using my exclusion criteria. And the main points of my exclusion criteria were that although um, a lot of the study, all the studies did cover blue collar workplaces, some of the blue collar workplaces weren't comparable enough to forestry. Um, and I just couldn't see the connect there. So I excluded those studies. And um, a lot of the burnout studies, um, burnout covers uh, mental strain, but also physical strain. So a lot of the burnout studies were too focused on physical risks such as musculoskeletal or cardiovascular issues rather than just psychosocial risk management. And um, for my discussion in my report, I classed um, eight intervention types into the five categories that I had to address the interventions. But for the sake of this uh, presentation, I'll just be covering four of the most effective interventions that I thought. So these were my results um, with the five categories that I had outlined and the underlined uh, intervention types are the ones that I'm covering in this presentation. So that brings me to the first category, which is skills training. Um, there were two interventions which stood out the most here. The first being uh, Rational Emotive Behavior Therapy, or REBT for short. And uh, this intervention type came out uh, came about uh, quite a few times. Um, so I thought it was quite notable. And the main idea here is uh, teaching workers to identify and eliminate irrational beliefs that they might have associated with their work environment or tasks. And um, I thought that this is quite important to forestry because workers are quite susceptible in forestry to have irrational beliefs that are associated with the work. Um, another intervention that I found was a health profile that was uh, tailored and offered to blue collar workers. and. The main idea here was just increasing workers' own perception and awareness of personal mental health, which is the first step in addressing the problem and um, removing it. So for the second category, uh, improvement of working conditions, there was just one intervention here, which I thought um, I'd talk about because it was of utmost importance, and that is the co-design of interventions. So uh, co-design is when uh, entities such as uh, managers, stakeholders, and even the workers themselves work together and collaborate to uh, tailor an intervention right into the work environment and for the set organization. And um, all studies that I looked at, I think I looked at four studies covering, sorry, three studies covering co-creation, and they all had uh, very successful results. Um, not 
particularly the intervention that was covered, but the design of the intervention and incorporating it, in, incorporating it into the workplace. And again, this is quite this can be quite important to forestry um, because there is a stigma surrounding this topic of mental health and um, mental well-being interventions where if the workers and stakeholders and managers work together, there's a higher uh, chance of acceptance and participation, which can lead to a much uh, higher success rate of the intervention. Um, the third category that I'm talking about was improvement of quality occupational qualifications and there was just one intervention that stood out the most here which was a peer mentoring program where external agencies came in and um, provided peer mentoring principles to the managers uh, teaching them how to provide peer mentoring to their workers and uh, due to the structure of forestry organizations in New Zealand um, and the chain of operations that happens is usually a manager you know uh, just managing one crew and one or, or one union of workers where it's good if this information about the intervention can come directly from that manager not from a faceless um person somewhere high up in the organization or um some it just yeah isn't as personal so increasing personalization had a positive effect on um, the success of interventions and for the final category that i mentioned was quite a simple intervention but it was yoga-based loosening exercises, which proved to be surprisingly effective. Um, and again, it, the, the problem would be to in, incorporate this into a forest work environment, but um, the success that was seen in this intervention, I thought that it could be good to um, consider that one. Um, because, yeah, so blue collar, uh, sorry, um, forestry workers are blue collar workers at the end of the day, and they do have, um, physical pain, which if, if we alleviate this, it can as a direct improvement of mental well-being. Uh, the facilitators that I was looking for during my um, during finding interventions was firstly low cost and uh, simplicity of interventions. So low cost or cost effectiveness increase the chances of uh, both stakeholders and managers getting behind the intervention and pushing that uh, into their organization, um, which is quite self-explanatory. But also um, the simplicity of interventions benefited workers and managers because um, in workers' cases, it doesn't feel like there's a, another intervention being dropped onto their heads and they do have they do lead a, a busy schedule and routine at work. Um, and an, a successful intervention shouldn't feel like it's providing more work for them to do during their day. Um, and also for managers, it was the ease of implementation and getting people to participate and follow um strongly increase the likelihood of success of interventions um the largest limitation that i encountered many times was that a lot of studies had no long-term effectiveness measurement um or they, they didn't measure sustained change however they did mention in most of the limitations that a refresher course or um a you know getting up to date in in a set amount of time be it three months six months or a year um, is necessary, but it's not usually required to do the whole course again or the intervention courses again. So the, the interventions as part of the activities, certain courses as part of the intervention activities, it can just have to be like a, a video call refresher or um, or a shorter questionnaire type type activity. And yeah, that concludes my that concludes my intervention.